This is Fabio with WinterIsComing.net. I am here with the amazing Ron Donick. Donicky? Donicky. Donicky on this side Donicky. of the Atlantic. Did then, they say chi on anywhere else? In the States, a lot of people say Donacci. Donacci? Yeah, yeah. Donacci? I've, yeah, I've had that for years. New York. Don hey, Donacci. New York, yeah, Mr. Donacci, your car's waiting for you. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, awesome. That's cool. First time I went to uh, the States to, no, not the first time, the first time I went to LA, I had uh, an Italian driver meet me at the airport and it was Mr. Dinacci, so I'm this way, please. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. The name translates, name does, translates. It does fine. It does fine. Awesome. Um, you've been, uh, unlike a lot of the Game of Thrones uh, actors, um, some who are just beginning their careers, I mean, you've had a pretty spectacular career up, up through this point. You were in Titanic. I was, yeah. It was uh, a very lauded role. I mean, people were... When we found out you were, you were uh, cast as... Um, as Sir Roderick. We were like, okay, what, what has he done? What has he done? And all the stuff, the Titanic stuff comes up, and we're just like, oh, this is awesome. He's going to be great. And, of course, you were great. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, but I had, I had heard an interesting thing. Uh, someone said that you had actually read George Martin's book prior to that. Well, what happened was I, I hadn't read A Song of Ice and Fire. But when they, the job was mooted, I went out looking for them. Okay. I got the bookshop. None of them were there, but Fever Dream was there. Okay. And Fever Dream is a book that I'd read when it was published in 1981. So I thought, well, that bodes well, because I remember it very fondly. This is, it was a good book. And Vampire book. Yeah. Okay. That's a really good read. Yeah. Uh, so I figured, well, okay, I've actually I got a hold of the Game of Thrones and started reading it. And I was only intended to read the first book to prepare for the edition. But I was so hooked by the first one that by the time the edition came up, I'd read everything that was published published up to that point. I mean, I just sat down and read, up to that point, it was uh, Feast for Crows was the last published book, <laughs> and I read right through it. Right through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you love it. I love it, yeah. I mean, I think it's fantastic. Actually. That's great. I, love, I, love that. I know that thrilled a lot of the fans, too. It's it's something, for me, it's kind of a moot point, because some people are like, oh, they need to read the books. But I, you have to explain, well, some actors' process is different. They don't yeah. want to know what happens, and some people want to be informed. So. Mm. It's a completely different process. Um, I do remember, um, and this was, I think, uh, during filming of the pilot, there was a book signing that George did, and they brought in a lot of the actors over. It was yeah. in, and you attended it, along with all these essentially new faces, these people who've never yeah. been on stage. What, tell me, what goes through your head when you're basically, you're kind of the elder statesman, you have these kids running around, kind of getting this kind of strange attention. I mean, is it, were you kind of a calming presence in that stage? Or what was like. I guess maybe I was. I mean, for all of us, if you, you know, whenever you go into something as, a, as an older actor and there are kids involved, you know, you're, you're a hostage to fortune because kids, you are with anybody, but kids particularly, you don't know what you're going to do. And we've been enormously fortunate in this show because the kids are fantastic. Yes, they are. And that was apparent very, very early on. You could tell how, how talented they were and how, how good they were going to be to work with. So the, the day of signing the, in the, the bookstore in Belfast when we did that, we, we signed books, I think. Uh, in a, a local bookshop in the afternoon, and then George had a moot that evening. A moot. I mean, George had a moot in the local bar, which is really, is really cool. As well. uh, but yeah, you do begin. You know, when you start working with people, and you're, you know, you're just about old enough to be the granddad, and all of a sudden you realise mm, I have been doing this a lot. I've been doing this a long time. Yeah. Uh, the kids have been fantastic, and obviously because I was working a lot with uh, the Stark family, mm -hmm. I had a lot to do with uh, the, the kids, and they've just been marvelous. And you get to watch them grow. Oh. I mean, it, it's crazy. Yeah, well, I, I only see them, you know, once a year now. <laughs> you, you come back and, you know, people who were really small children, young kids, you know, they're now looking you in the eye, and, you know, they, they've, you know, they've They've developed as people, they've developed as performers. They're still, you know, they're still all really good, good kids and, and, and nice people to be with. We're all going to have dinner tonight, I think, after. Oh, that's fantastic. After the convention that's or, fantastic. Or, or, or. Okay, last question. Um, if you could play any kind of character in an ongoing series, like you watch television or your movie series, you know, you watch certain series of films, you know, that are like Star Wars or stuff like that. If you could pick anyone who said, you know what, I really want to be involved with that one, what would you? What would you pick? Okay, that's a good question. Uh, ongoing stuff. I mean, I'd love to be in stuff like Band of Brothers. I think that's great material. I know I, I could. I'd like to be in. Uh, I think there's some brilliant act in that. Some of the, the unsung guys, in it, the guys that play the sergeants, who are in the background a little rather than the foreground yeah. guys. I mean, I think there's some wonderful acting going on there. That's there's always brilliant. great material for actors in that kind of. Role. I like stuff like that. Uh, I've spent so much of my life playing playing cops that you know, <laughs> I, I always sort of you know I, I think back to, to criminal things all the time. But uh, 
anything where there's anything where there's essentially good heart of character, but there's conflict involved as well. It's always a good thing for a character to, to, to be involved. And Roderick was, was perfect. Yes, he was, and he was kind of a cop in his own way. He was, yeah, yeah. But um, oh, and I know this is kind of talking out of school because we didn't get any of this on, on tape. But uh, the last the last panel that we had uh, prior, and people were talking about how how much they were affected by the Roderick beheading scene, especially especially with him giving his last line about yeah, I'm going to see. I mean, when you read that line in the script, you must have said. Oh. Nailed it. That's a question. I can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you do. You go. <laughs> yeah. You do. You think that's, that's a great line. It's also it's a tough line to play because, yeah. you know, you're in the character and that's so it's difficult. But also, you know, the boys, uh, uh, Isaac and Art, you know, and, and the other actors that are there, Donald and, and, and uh, Christian, you know, we'd all got on so well. And it was a big farewell moment and, and a horrifying moment. Yeah. And uh, I think I said to somebody earlier, you know, Roderick's not frightened to die. Rod, Roderick's a man who's been a soldier all his days and he's expected death since he was old enough to hold the sword. What horrifies him is leaving his boys without the protection. Yeah. And just at the very last second he tries to give them just a tiny, a tiny piece of consolation. That was great to do. That was, that was such a fantastic scene. And just amidst all these other fantastic scenes, that it's, it's so great that they've that the show has been able to put together Nina Gold. We have a saying over at Winter's Coming back now. In, in Nina Gold we trust. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because she's put together just this fantastic group. This yeah, team. It's, it's a great ensemble. But again, that's the thing HBO does. They, you know, they've got away from the model of having a big star performer and the rest of the cast sort of draped on top of them. I mean, they have. Yeah. You know, they have extraordinary, you know, big name actors in it. But what they go for, you know, in Band of Brothers is a perfect example. They go for a, a strength across the board that, that makes the stuff so so watchable and so attractive. You, you don't look any place on screen and find a weak link, and that's, nope. that's great. And being fans of the books, that's 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 what we hope for. That's what we got. Ron, it was a pleasure meeting you. Fabio, pleasure. All right. With Ron Donaghy, this is Fabio. WinnersComing.net. We're out. <laughs>